Hey, Austin. Great to see you, buddy. How was your weekend? I uh, cannot com I cannot <laughs> complain too much. It was a uh, fairly uneventful weekend. <laughs> that's a uh, that's very true. So what are you up to this evening? Oh, good. Ashley, good to see you. How was uh, how was your weekend? How did your um, how did your peanut butter balls turn out? Hey Jock, great to see you buddy. Were you able to find that movie you were looking for?
Oh, well, that's always a good sign. If you, uh, if you, if you run out of leftovers, then you know they turned out nice. Well, I hope you're able to find a, uh, a good version of it, Jock, that you can download. Uh, excuse me. Well, at least you have that option, Jock, which is good. There's nothing worse than wanting to see a movie and it not being available anywhere. So, that's really good. When you say order it, do you mean like you're gonna um, stream it through them or you're gonna like buy a physical copy? Yeah, it's uh, it's always nice having a physical copy just in case you want to go back and watch it, and Amazon takes it off their uh, their service. Uh, well, I have a whole lot to shake here, Ashley. If you're wondering why I put electrical tape at the between my biceps and my shoulder. 
it's because I've been looking into uh, blood flow restriction training where it's basically uh, you get a band kind of like my wrist wraps but you tie them up here uh, or at the right up under your hip and it restricts the blood flow so that you can use less weight but still get a good burn now I uh, uh, I wanted to try it out with some electrical tape before I invested in anything which I probably won't buy anything because it's basically just a, an elastic belt an elastic band so if I were to get some elastic and stitch on some velcro I could probably make my own uh, but I just wanted to see like how it felt uh, but this is I don't know like how if this is tight enough but I wanted to try it out because I could probably get a uh, uh, yeah, I could probably get a better burn doing certain things if I kind of restrict the blood flow like well like I would wear my elbow pads my, my elbow sleeves during certain exercises and it would get like a really good burn pretty quickly. So I would imagine that it's the same kind of concept, just uh, at a different at a different location. So we'll try some things. Yeah, it's a um, it's an old wrestler trick. Uh, if you, if right before you go to the ring, you know you stick your arm out and you flex, and then you have somebody because it's hard to do by yourself. But if you have somebody, kind of dig in a little bit, then not like cut the blood flow off because that'll be terrible, but restrict it. Then you're, you know, you're, yeah, because of that little divot there. <clears throat> your biceps are going to look bigger and uh, depending on how tight it is and uh, how vascular you already are you know your veins will really show so that's uh, guys like uh, Warrior did that the British Bulldog did it uh, a lot of guys you know they would just uh, throw some electrical tape over it or they would use those bands it's a uh, like the like the like the like the, the knots they would tie tassels to them And then there were, uh, there were, uh, there are a lot of other wrestlers that would do it too. You guys are pointed really low. Let me 
raise this up a touch. Uh, if you go back and you look at um, Ron Simmons and Butch Reed, they did that. Or uh, uh, look at, um, uh, I mean, Ron Simmons basically throughout his career, he, you know, he, like he and Bradshaw did it as the Acolytes. And uh, it's just it's just one of those like little wrestler tricks that you know if you're if you're a body well like even Lex Luger over here Luger would uh he would if you noticed he would have those uh those like um well like in WCW he would have that multicolored like black and white elastic and those were just slip-ons I'm sure. Uh, but he would he would tape his biceps, and then <coughs> just put that band over it to hide it. And it's a it's a uh, it's a cheap and easy way because you know if you depending on how you're standing, your shoulders can look bigger, and you know when you flex, uh, depending on how tight you get it uh, in the right position, it'll really dig in right here which makes your peaks look bigger although you, you probably shouldn't do it by yourself which is uh which can be said for a lot of things you know it's more fun with somebody helping oh well i'll uh i'll have to convert you austin as, uh, whew, that's cold. Whew, that's cold. I'm a great big Luger fan. So you hang out with me for a little while. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bring you over to the dark side. Even as recently as, um, like, guys like Ryback. You know, guys like that would do it. If you, it's a pretty good indicator if you see somebody with some kind of uh, strap or um, something like that, like an armband across the uh, across their uh, at the top of their biceps. It's usually an indication that they're hiding uh, electrical tape. Yeah, he was, he was, his horseman stuff was, it was really good at the end when uh, he, um, he was in that battle royal and J.J. Dillon was also in there and Luger turned into a good guy and tossed him out uh, and then his feud with the horseman was good. Uh, yeah, Luger was a much better bad guy. Uh, I mean, I still think... I'm one of those people who think that Luger would have been just fine if uh, if they would have put the title on him in 1993 over Yokozuna because uh, the people were behind him. And if you look, if you look at Luger in. 1997 when he beat Hogan, you know, that shit was huge. So, I will always, uh, maybe to a fault, but I will always defend Lex Luger.
I can absolutely believe that. Uh, Hogan was very protective of, of his spot. So, it's not out of the realm of possibility to think that, you know, maybe Hogan went over to Vince and was like, hey, this guy's a better bad guy. Because, I mean, Ordorff was a great bad guy. He and Hogan drew a shit ton of money. Uh, so, I could imagine Hulk wanting to work with Orndorff, but Orndorff was also a really good, good guy. Uh, maybe he didn't have the, the over-the-top promo ability that Hogan did. Uh, and if you, if you, uh, if you go back and you watch that time, if you're, if you're the WWF and it's the mid eighties, Hogan is your guy. You know, you don't, you don't want to change horses mid race. So I can understand like, okay, you know, it's, it's fine for a little while, but we don't want to. We don't want to upset the apple cart. So, you know, keeping Orndorff, turning Orndorff back into a bad guy was uh, probably the right call overall, but. Because if you, uh, Hogan was the guy from 83, and then they put it on Savage at 88, and even though Savage was, uh, a great good guy, it was still Hogan's time, it was still his era, so you had to give it back to him at 5, at 89. And then, I mean, they tried the Ultimate Warrior, we saw how that turned out. Well, there are a lot of guys that are just better bad guys. You know, I love I love Randy Savage. I think Randy Savage was a better bad guy. I love Paul Orndorff. I think Paul Orndorff was a better bad guy. I was just watching some Orndorff too because uh, uh, my buddy had come over, and we were watching. Um, 1993 WCW uh, after he and Paul Roma got together. And I really enjoyed that tag team. Uh. Whew. This tape is starting to peel away and pull out my arm hair. Uh, it's probably a sign that I need to not use tape when I do this and that I need to shape my arms.
Plus, I doubt electrical tape is the uh, is the most it is a good thing to keep on your on your on your skin for long periods of time. I'm probably gonna break out in a rash and a perfect circle around my biceps. Yeah, I wish um I wish Orndorff and Roma had a bit of a longer run. Uh, but that was you know, they were starting to uh uh, I can definitely feel it. Probably got a uh, probably got a ring around my arm. But that thing was digging into me. You can see it right there. Yeah. But it definitely feels good. Um, maybe uh, maybe I can try some different things. Um, I can pick up some Velcro from Hobby Lobby. And I can pop the camera on, and you guys can watch me try to try to sew something. Although I don't think I don't think the ones that I were that I was looking at used Velcro. I think they they used more of a um, like a buckle type of thing, which I could probably do that as well. I'm trying to remember if, if, if Orndorff was on the cartoon. It's been a little while since I've seen it. And you know, some people stick out. I don't think Orndorff was. So, you know, a lot of them, a lot of the guys in there stick out more. You know, Andre and Hogan, and then you have the bad guys like Sheik and Nikolai and Mula. And then the good guys, you had, uh, uh, you know, JYD. I could probably confirm that by tomorrow because I have the uh, I have the series. Never, I don't, I don't, I haven't gone back and watched it, but I was just like, I'm just gonna download everything I can. So I did. Uh, whew. It's um, it's 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 a, uh, it's smart to uh, if you're gonna make a cartoon, you know, you want somebody nice and animated like uh, like the Sheik. You know, he's he's very animated, so why not make him a cartoon character? Uh, or uh, you know, Nikolai being a big doofus, and then JYD, even though. JYD and his in his in that go you know in, in that run he was a, a shell of what he was in Mid South. I don't think I've seen the show in like twenty years, and uh, even that was like fifteen years after it aired. <sighs>
<sighs> well, uh, we'll have to start a YouTube channel, Jock, where you and I uh, watch and review those old WWF cartoons. Oh, well, if, uh, if you're Vince McMahon and uh, you're, you're cherry-picking all of the wrestlers from the uh, territories, 1984, 1985, you're going after JYD. Like, he was, he was selling out the Mid-South, not the Mid-South, but uh, he was selling out the Superdome whenever they went. And you couldn't get much more of a stereotypical WWF wrestler than JYD because JYD wasn't going to go in there and wrestle like, uh, you know, Jack Briscoe. JYD could talk his ass off and was super charismatic and uh, sell some tickets. So it's, I mean, the, the thing that happened with JYD was more so that uh, he just, he just, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to um, butcher your name. Is it Ephesus? Uh Sorry if I if I mispronounce that. I um I do not train bench press, so there's a good chance that I can bench press to maybe 40 pounds. <laughs> uh, what I do to mimic the bench press here at my house is I do the single arm cable uh, bench press, and I'll do the butterflies. Uh, so you would have to come back to me in a in about a year or so after I uh, practice bench press so I can give you an accurate number. I doubt it's very much. So mostly when I'm here at the house though, I will do flat bench cable uh, press and then various degrees of incline. And then the sitting press. Well, I appreciate that, buddy. The, uh, everything's such a different move, you know, because, uh, whew, that sucks. That, that, that bit me at the end. Uh, doing the regular bench press, uh, while well, doing the cable, I'm able to uh, bring my hand around and get more of a sweep. If I can show that right here. Get more of a sweep to get that. Uh, as, instead of being locked in, I've always preferred um, to single arm uh, most things because uh, I don't want my dominant hand to take over. It's a, uh, I kind of screwed myself over because tonight was supposed to be chest and triceps, but my, um, my right outside elbow right down here has been giving me a, some guff the last couple of days because of some, uh, some furniture work that I did. So I was hoping that if I could focus on just triceps, I might be able to loosen her up a little bit. But I'm also just lazy. Wow, it's been 37 and a half minutes. Uh, I need to, I actually need to restructure my chest workout because uh, 
the exercise that I'm do the exercises that I've been doing, I'm hitting a lot of upper chest, and my lower chest is very underdeveloped. Uh, I mean, it's, I'm never going to have like a tight lower chest, and I'm always going to have some sag here because you know I've got some body fat, so <laughs> just a little bit of body fat. <laughs> uh, I need to focus on getting that lower pec, you know, deep in here and stop trying to so much develop up here. Although, I guess it really doesn't matter because you can't, it's like hard to flex your lower pec, but the upper pec is what drives everything. So like if, as long as I can do this, I'm, uh, I'm content. All right, let's, um, let's maybe do one more set before we call it a day because I don't want to be in here for an hour working triceps. But I have been, today has been feeling pretty good. Woo. Sorry about that, my back kind of twinged on me. I, uh, I hope that the next time uh, you come by uh, Ephesus, <laughs> or I'll just call you Grace, <laughs> uh, so I'll look a little less stupid, constantly mispronouncing your name. Uh, hopefully the next time you come by, um, you can check out my chest day, and maybe there's a correlation to how much I can single arm press to what it would what it would be uh, dual wielding. We were just talking about Hulk Hogan, and here comes his music. Okay. I uh, really appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight. It means a lot. I, uh, I enjoyed... I enjoyed trying out the... Uh, the tape. I think that if... Uh, I think that if I were to, um, oh, that's, that's not going to work. That's, that's not big enough. I think that if I were to get out my, um, my measuring tape and measure this little, this area right here and then, um, get some elastic, I should be able to sew together something like this, you know, with a, maybe with a hook that the uh, elastic can feed through so that like this, I can put it around my biceps and pull it tight and then wrap it around and snatch it. Uh, it's just a, it's just a little bit of a, of a logistics thing. Uh, although trying to get some kind of feeder like um, kind of like those Boy Scout belts. I don't know if any, if anybody was in the Boy Scouts. Uh, you know how they have those uh, those loop and clasp belt buckles. If I were to get one of those and loop it through and then tighten it, uh, not so tight that it constricts blood flow, like where my hand turns purple, uh, but put some kind of resistance on there that I'll be able to uh, uh, try it again. Not not just with triceps, but with biceps as well. Uh, and then if I can do something like that for my arms, I'd like to do something with, that, with my legs where I can um, pop it right here, you know, right, the, right below the hip and, uh, you know, do some leg extensions and shit like that, so. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll play around. Uh, but I hope everybody 
has a great rest of your Sunday. Uh, feel free to message me anytime on any platform that uh, we can make with the conversation. Uh, I'll be back on tomorrow at some point doing something. Who knows, maybe, uh, maybe I'll go back and pick up the, the, the exercises I missed, you know, do, do a back workout, do a chest workout, depending on how my biceps and triceps feel. Uh, wouldn't be the worst idea to make sure I do my shoulders and my traps and all that fun stuff and maybe uh, break down and do my hamstrings here at the house. So uh, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy me then. If not, I hope you have a great start to your week. Enjoy your Monday. Stay nice and cool. Uh, and I hope to talk to you again real soon. Uh, but until then, good night.